Hello and welcome to another episode of Be the Love to Awaken Our Souls. Thank you again so much for tuning in this week. I'm Stacy Musial. And I am Brenda Carey with our special guest, Christian Yordanoff. We are your co-hosts and souls on the journey, and we are on a mission to raise the consciousness of humans and the planet, and we need your help. Please spread the word to your family and friends and join us every week. Consider becoming a Patreon supporter or a sponsor to help with the operating costs like editing and the many hours we spend creating these shows with quality guests and content. And if you have resonated with our mission, support us in a way that raises your vibration to love. And if it feels safe for you, I'd like to begin by inviting you to take a moment to get centered with us. I'd like to begin by inviting you to take a beautiful cleansing breath in through your nose and out through your mouth, releasing anything that's keeping you from being present. And take another deep breath in through your nose, breathing in calm, peaceful, loving energy and breathing out anything you are ready to release in this now moment. And take one more breath in through your nose, breathing in light and love for yourself. And imagine breathing that light and love and send it back to all of humanity, remembering that you always, always have your breath to come back to. Our guest today is Christian Yordanoff. He is a certified functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and author of the book, Autism Wellbeing Plan, How to Get Your Child Healthy. As a health professional, Christian uses advanced lab testing to identify hidden metabolic and health imbalances and teaches clients how to use diet, supplementation, detoxification, stress reduction, sleep optimization, and other strategies to address chronic health issues and transform their health. He is a certified breath instructor, nutrition coach, grow baby practitioner, DNA fit trainer, and also certified in personal training, fitness instruction, and sports and event massage therapy. He is also the host of two podcasts, Connecting Minds, which I had the honor of being on, and the Children's Health Podcast. Thank you so much for being here with us today, Christian. Brenda, Stacy, thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be on your show. Yeah, so let's get started. Let's tell us about your journey and what has led you down this spiritual path. Sure, first of all, that was a, an awesome way to start the show i have to say um it's definitely we have not done that before with with the host and it's such a normally i'm so amped up um you know on new tropics and mind stimulating substances because i'm a bit <laughs> of a supplement nerd so i'm like all right let's do this and now i'm like um okay i'm, okay. <laughs> I'm centered i'm yes. centered and relaxed <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's, I really appreciate that. It was very special. So a little bit about myself to, to make a, to make a long story as short as I can. Basically, in my late teens and early and all of my twenties, I really, I, it, it was, there was a lot of struggles in terms of, I, I got in with the wrong crowd when I was kind of in my, uh, around 15, 16 years of age. And that led down to a, a path of drinking and <clears throat> partying. And a lot of that stayed with me in my 20s. So when I was 19, I, I had moved to Ireland with my sister to um, to study, to go to college. And um, I remember I picked up Eckhart Tolle's book, The Power of Now, in a bookstore. And I was reading that book. And at, at some point during that book, I I was on, I remember very, very vividly, I was in our first place we were in, the, the first apartment in Dublin. And I looked, I put the book down for a minute and I looked towards, there was a flower pot near the, the balcony. And I just looked at the flower. And I believe that was probably the first moment in my life where the egoic mind just stopped for a few moments. And uh, that's, you know, maybe in Zen or or kind of in Buddhist terms they call it satori i don't want to may, maybe satori is more special m more amazing than that but maybe it's not it maybe it's just a moment of the the incessant egoic monkey mind stopping for for a few seconds so that you are now you're like oh wait i'm still here 
what am I? Well, obviously you say that with the egoic mind, but you realize, I suppose it's a realization rather than a <clears throat> rationalization. You realize your consciousness uh, and there's probably a, a degree of separation between the ego and your and your base consciousness, which I think some of us can probably experience while we sleep. So that was really the start of it. Um, but I, it, I would dip in and out of these spiritual things. Uh, since then, I've always been into various different spiritual things and teachings. But I definitely um, struggled a lot in my twenties with in terms of finding my path in life, and it was kind of. Basically, when I met my my now wife <clears throat> about seven years ago, really, is when I started to to get into the health the health side of things, and I saw the people around me, family and stuff, uh, deteriorating, succumbing to illness, and I had to get on. Uh, I, uh, I suppose get on a. I, I suppose I started researching these things to see whether I will succumb to them, whether they're genetic, whether they're environmental and lifestyle related. And that's when I kind of figured that out, that it's mostly mostly my decisions. That's when I started changing my decisions for the better. And around 2018, a child in my family was suspected of being on the autistic spectrum. And that's what spurred me on to start researching the autism stuff. And eventually in 2020, I I published the book. But in that kind of time period, that's when I realized that my spiritual journey here is, I suppose, at a very basic level, it's about cultivating good karma. Whether that, whether that I will um, um, experience the benefits of that in the next life or in this life is not really consequential to me. Right now, I believe my journey here is to be a part of the solution, quote unquote, be a part of the reparative, the reparative processes going on as opposed to 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 that path i had taken in my 20s where it's a kind of a self-destructive path of just being basically a waster waste of time waste of space and not not really contributing much so i want to with my, my mission and i believe it's a spiritual thing as well as a in the material world is to i don't i don't know if the world needs healing but it, it kind of seems like it and um that's what i want i want to be a part of that healing process if if that is really true, because maybe on an even grander scale, it's all perfect. The universe is perfect in its suchness and maybe doesn't need healing. And we're the ones that probably need to just grow and, and develop more as spiritual beings to understand the perf the perfection that lies out there. But certainly for my limited human egoic mind, it does seem like there's a lot of stuff going on in the world that needs needs to be, to be um, addressed and, and, and repaired. And I, I want to be part of that solution. Mm, that's really beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. And so, yeah, it sounds like sounds like your personal journey has really, you know, as as I think all of us, right, has really led you to your your purpose um, and what you were seeing as maybe having, you know, with your family member having um, being on the autis autism spectrum and really catapulting that into doing that research and but also seeing the the world um you know needing healing or, or as within so without maybe um mm -hmm. and so so i'm wondering yeah can you talk a little bit more about that and and what you're seeing with chronic health conditions and how that might be impacting personal and spiritual growth how, are you seeing sure. anything along those, those lines i think so when you think about it right i <laughs> I think the the picture of the mystic, the ascetic, is a little bit um, of a fiction, right? I'm sure there's a lot of yogis in um, in Asia, maybe in in the mountains, living on subsisting on maybe water, or maybe they're so advanced that they can subsi subsist on breathing and sunlight and stuff like that. But for the average Joe and Jane like us, in order to fully develop spiritually. You need to that, that that can only occur from a place of what I like to call um, safety and abundance, right? So if you look at things like <clears throat> or periods like the Renaissance, it 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 was during a relative uh, period of peace, uh, uh, abundance, prosperity, economic growth, and during 
during war and famine, you don't really see the the higher cognitive abilities of people being expressed as art, music. And you, you can even see, because my wife is a former professional ballerina, she really understands the, the classical music. So she, when we listen to classical music, sometimes she say, look at how sort of dark this music is and intense. And then she starts telling me about the period of time where it was sort of created by the composer and it was a time of strife, war, etc. And then if you look at someone like Debussy, his music is so uplifting and um, it really is a... Ref so art, the arts, and if you look at now the mod, just another example, the modern art nowadays, how, and the music, how sort of um, twisted it is, a lot of it can be. Uh, it's really a reflection of, of the of the the collective consciousness the human psyche right so my point there being is looking talking about the individual level now let's just talk about ourselves as individuals to <clears throat> to really excuse me one second to maximize our spiritual capacities we really have to take care of the human body because what is the human body well very likely the consciousness <clears throat> is not in the human body, it's with or without it, it exists, right? And it's more like the human body is more like a, a receiver, like a TV or a radio. And if your if your receiver has faulty parts or parts that haven't been serviced or replaced, you're likely not going to get the downloads from from the universe very well, right? You're not going to get those channels very well. So that's how I I, I talk. Uh, that's how I see, at least personally, how I see it. So the receiver, the body. There's a lot of things that there's a lot of it's a complex system, very one of the most complex systems that we that we have discovered in the universe, probably the most complex system. So there's there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things that can kind of go haywire, even though it's very good at self-healing. The 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 one of the biggest issues or the, the couple of biggest issues right out there in the world is first of all, how polluted the the earth has become due to activities of humans. And how um, <clears throat> how much the food supply has deteriorated in terms of quality and, again, in terms of toxicity. So when you take a human that's at birth, they may already... Let's pretend they're perfect at birth in terms of health, but even now we know that the mother's health is obviously a big factor. Um, a lot of toxins are already crossing the placenta. They're in, in the baby when it's born. But let's pretend that baby like is born perfectly healthy. In the in the current world, it's exposed to a lot of toxin, toxic toxins, toxic metals, toxic chemicals, and suboptimal food. Most people are eating suboptimally. If you look at the nutritional status, if you were, if you were to take a bunch of people, do the lab testing, we we will see that minerals, vitamins, and a bunch of other things are are definitely less than optimal. So. The, my strategy for restoring health would be the same for enhancing cognitive function would be the same for enhancing spiritual function because it's all a spectrum. If you're very sick and ill, you need a lot of health restoration to get you, let's say, to, to good a good state of health. At that point, similar principles apply. You just apply them differently to get you to optimal health. When you're at optimal health, now you can start to develop your your um, cognitive abilities, <clears throat> your higher higher uh, cognitive functions, and you do that from a place of again safety and abundance. So if you're in a place of safety, and uh, nutrient nutritional status is good, meaning abundance, you're getting the food, the nutrients you need, the love, support, nurturing, and care around you, and there isn't too much craziness going in the world. That is when you can start to develop these things. But if any of these things come uh, are out of kilter. It starts to get hard. And a, a, a simple example I'll give is we know that some women that experience uh, premenstrual syndrome, PMS, we know just what the simple rise of a sex hormone like estrogen, estradiol, can cause in terms of their, you know, ability to sleep, their general feeling of well-being, um, you know, or women that are, are put on birth control pills is another example, just that because they're estrogen based, a lot of them. Um, just that one hormone disbalancing other hormones in the body can cause so much anxiety or just any number of mood related issues sleep issues physiological issues right so that the, the reason i say that is <clears throat> when i say we need to be in a place of safety and abundance 
how we feel about the world largely also influences our, our sex and adrenal hormones or our stress hormones. And those can play a really big role in terms of how we feel. If, you're, if your cortisol is high, if you're stressed, whether that's from looking at your smartphone, arguing with a boss, a client, uh, or from exercising too hard or from fasting too long, if you're in that stress state, that immediately shuts down your higher cognitive function. So this is what I say, uh, and we can develop it any way you want, but this is what I mean when I say, to, to okay, the abundance part is easy, you know, plenty of nutrients, uh, all the macronutrients, protein, fat, and carbs. But the safety aspect, I think, in this current society is really been so twisted. Like you feel, you <clears throat> uh, uh, psychologically, you're like, I'm safe. I'm at home. No one can harm me. But you're you got the news on, or you know, you're 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 talking to all your loved ones with, and they're like sharing all their health problems. So you can be a very very stressed up in here in the head, even though. All around you, everything is totally fine and, and you're safe. There's no predators. There's no, you know, all that good stuff. So I think that is what is a big impediment uh, to a, a lot of these higher cognitive functions developing in, in humans right now. Mm -hmm. I like how you bring in so many different connections with that. And yeah, let's unpack some of that. You mentioned like our earth with the pollution in the air and our food supply being, you know, not as nutrient as it used to be. So we're absorbing these toxins, whether through our skin or where they're, whether we are ingesting them. And that's one layer. And then you add on the emotional component layer of like these cortisol rises, whether it's a fight with the boss or mm -hmm. social media and the dopamine hits that we get addicted to, those all play into just a very complex uh, system. And as humans, we are I think, you know, we are miraculously designed mm -hmm. and we can only take so much <laughs> after a while, the body and the mind, the cognitive function, just, they do begin to shut down as a protective me mechanism. Yeah. Um, I know with my own autoimmune condition, like I just, my body was just telling me too much, too much. And my brain, I was absorbing almost too much information. So it's interesting how you pull in all these different pieces. And I think it's really interesting to look at this connection. Our earth is suffering. I mean, there is more pollution. I mean, there's definitely strides towards making that better, our food supply, the depletion of the soil. So it's like, so without, you know, what we see on the outside is happening also within us. So yeah. let's kind of take the this one piece of like, I know you are definitely an expert in detoxification. And so let's say for various reasons, we are exposed to a lot of these pollutant types of um, toxins that affect our liver and other organs. Like what are some helpful things, protocols that people can do to begin to start that detoxification process when we are exposed to so much on this planet? Yeah. That's a very important question. And so I, I kind of I can kind of go over what I what I do with um with with clients. Let's say, so the first thing is start adding things that are likely missing. And when when it comes to minerals, this is a big component of it because um, if you are if your diet is deficient in zinc, for example, your body will take up more cadmium. Now the way these um uh, elements are uh, are putting columns on the periodic table. Certain ones, for example, cadmium and zinc, they fall in the same uh, um, column. Same with lead and calcium. That The reason they're arranged in that way is because they share similar properties. I'm not a chemist. <clears throat> I really don't understand how it works. But from, from what I've uh, researched, if your diet is deficient in calcium is another example, the body would take up more lead and the lead will displace the calcium in the bones. Similarly, cadmium can displace zinc in certain enzyme binding sites, and there's there's other exa other examples of this. You know, a, a diet low in iron can can also predispose to talk to toxic metals being absorbed by the body. So, the first thing we start is start adding back minerals and and vitamins and uh, amino acids that may be lacking. Now, with zinc, for example, would be probably the first or the second. Uh, mineral I would add to somebody's protocol, along with magnesium, a good source of magnesium, because magnesium. It really is needed for the energy system. So ATP, the molecule that kind of carries energy, quote unquote, adenosine triphosphate, that's 
bound to magnesium. That's kind of the, it's carried in that sort of uh, complex. And uh, you, so what that, what that means is you need energy to, to even to relax. So people that are very wired mm. and, and they can't relax even though their muscles are very stiff. When you give them magnesium, the, the reason they relax is not necessarily <clears throat> because magnesium is a relaxing mineral per se. It's because they, they, they were lacking the energy or, or the ability to produce that energy and carry it around the, the places where they need it in order to relax. It's kind of complex. Uh, but so we start remineralizing the body. And when you start doing that, you literally start pushing. So the, the, the pretend if it's a, <clears throat> a pipeline and you've got zinc and magnesium and calcium coming in and the body is just picking things the, uh, and uh, it's like, I'm going to use zinc here. Okay, let me remove this cadmium that was doing 60% of, of zinc's job before. I don't need it. I have a better thing to replace this part with. So cadmium and other toxic metals lead, they start getting pushed out and we can <clears throat> we can test it in the hair. You, you, when you put someone on a nutritional protocol, the, the hair toxic metals go up like mercury, lead, uh, aluminum. Uh, obviously, <clears throat> more, more advanced tests can be done in the blood and in the urine. So we start with the minerals. We also add B vitamins because, again, you need energy to do all of these processes, so the, this detoxification process. Then we make sure the person, or that it's actually one of the first things, but it's all done, it's all done together. We make sure the, the person is eating enough protein because the, the main detoxification enzymes, they're made of amino acids, which are building blocks of protein. So if you are under an increased toxic burden, you're using more of these detoxification enzymes and some parts of them, they get they get excreted out with the toxin. It's like you're packaging it up and then that amino acid is gone. So we start uh, supplying things like glycine, N-acetocysteine to, to increase, to upregulate the production of glutathione, which is kind of the main cellular antioxidant. So those are the, the very basic things, but as basic as they sound, they're so powerful because um, most of us right now in the world are, we, we may be fed, well fed or overfed, but many of us are, are actually malnourished or starved for the actual uh, nutrition in that food. First of all, some of us are eating a lot of junk calories, a lot of seed oils, especially in the States, uh, especially in Western Europe. But they're, they get prevalent everywhere. But these seed oils, they... They're so calorically dense, but they're they're bereft of nutrition, and they they in fact they increase our nutritional no, nutritional needs because they peroxidize or they oxidize and damage tissues, uh, cellular components. So we need to use our endogenous or our body's own antioxidants to to protect from that damage and to repair that damage. So cert certain nutrients, <clears throat> or you can't even call them nutrients. They're certain Certain things in the diet, like um, uh, emulsifiers, chemicals, they create a burden. So we are we are increasing the detoxification burden. So we want to number one remove them from the diet as much as possible. Try to go for as much as possible certified organic food as much as possible. Um, uh, you know, to to clean up our water supply, to to reduce uh, personal care product use that are not organic. Uh, so these are things to reduce the influx of toxins. Then the stuff I talked about, like the the, the minerals, high quality supplementation, high quality protein, uh, enough carbs, because again, we need energy to do all of these things. That will be the second step, right? And then I believe most people that are, um, <clears throat> are you know, it doesn't even matter where you are. If you're in an industrialized society, you're probably getting a ton of air pollution as well. So doing things like sauna, as, as often as possible, but at least two, three times a week, even if it's, if you just buy two or three infrared light bulbs, like you would for a terrarium or a chicken coop or for like hatchlings, a couple of those lamps, they're so cheap, like $20. If you position them around your body in a corner of your, of your apartment or your house and just get a sweat going, even a light sweat two, three times a week or every fifth day or, or every second day rather, uh, while you're reading a book or while you're watching something on, on TV is a really good way to stimulate extra toxins coming out because a lot of these toxins from from plastics, especially um, a lot of them are what is known as lipophilic 
So they, they have an affinity for fatty tissues. So it, it seems like the body is sequestering them in our fatty stores. But the, the problem is that a lot of vital organs like the brain have a lot of fat in them. So they have an affinity for those stores. So the sooner we get them out of our body via sweat, the 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 less likely that they're going to stay there and then cause damage. And then that damage, again, will cause more inflammation, uh, more nutrients required to quell that inflammation. Therefore, we are getting more depleted instead of, again, uh, what we are talking about earlier, instead of using that energy to write a book or write a song or paint a picture or love your kids or teach um, and, and create, instead of doing those things, and I, I believe this is why a lot of people are sort of uh, sick and, and unha unha unhealthy and unhappy is because that energy is being sucked towards just basic survival. And then, like you said, Brenda, well, that's when you shut down these these higher desires and higher cognitive things. And you're just like, I just want to get through the day. I want to go home. I want to have a glass of wine or I want to like watch my, my Netflix. Nobody talk to me. Nobody, nobody just leave me alone. And it, literally, if you take a depressed person, and you start doing all of these things a lot of the time. I know sometimes it's situational, it's trauma, it's stress. But if you start doing these things and you up the energy level, it's almost impossible to be in a high energy state and to be depressed, right? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And so I'm wondering, um, you know, so you mentioned a little bit about things we can add in and, and some ways to, to detox. I'm wondering, um, what about the lymph system? <clears throat> I've been hearing a lot about the lymph and, you know, it's, it's so important, you know, as our circulation, it's, um, but it doesn't have a pump, right? And so wondering um, if there's anything people can do to, to help support that lymph and how important is the lymph? Yeah, the, the lymph, uh, I don't know much about it. I don't think we know much about it in general, but I think uh, one one reason nowadays why the, our lymph system is congested is actually just because of a lot of us have a very sedentary lifestyle. And, you know, this office work or being in cars, sitting on the couch, we're not moving enough and we're not stimulating that lymph. So I actually got a rebounder a few months yeah. ago. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I think the, yeah. the first nice. thing people will tell you how to get your lymph going. There's a lot of other benefits. Actually, it's it's quite a good um, exercise. Uh, my my heart rate was up very quickly from the rebounder. I could feel my calves working. So, uh, point there is we really have to we have to um, sitting. There, some people are saying sitting is the new smoking, which mm. in many ways, when you think about it, it it, it kind of is because you're it's causing uh, just congestion because the, this body was created to, to be moving. So the lymph system, uh, I would start there. If somebody's sedentary, I would, I would definitely start thinking about more ways to move. If you're at a computer uh, eight hours a day, I would find an excuse every 20, 30 minutes to get up, do a little stretch, move around, whatever, just stretch your neck and stuff like that. That's a good start. Now, the other, another uh, thing that could be a massive problem is like I said, a lot of endocrine disrupting and other toxins are lipophilic. So they they have an affinity towards fatty tissues. And when you eat fats, when they're in your gut, they actually when when they get absorbed, they get absorbed into the lymphatic system. So most fats don't actually get absorbed and sent to the liver like carbohydrates, amino acids and um and glucose and stuff like that. The the uh, most fats, except uh, medium chain triglycerides (MCTs) like in coconut oil, they they go through the lymph system. If you have a lot of toxins, so if if you're you know not eating certified organic food, um, uh, especially a lot of dairy and animal fats that are not um, uh, raised in you know really good environments, that's a very big source of these. Mm -hmm. These um, uh, things like phthalates and um, uh, 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 flame retardants, PBDEs, uh, BPA, bisphenols, A, B, C, F, Z, S. There's a, a ton of different ones. So I, th I believe that's another reason why why people are like, you know, the lymphoma is becoming more and more prevalent. Younger people are getting it. I actually, I was talking to somebody in their early 40s that was diagnosed with lymphoma. And it's like, it's not normal for people this young to be developing cancers and, and conditions like that. So I believe that's one mechanism where we are 
we are unknowingly uh, getting a lot of lymph congestion. And what happens is when when this stuff is in your lymph system, now it it's either causing inflammation or tissue damage. And it's, again, using up your resources. And that inflammation is a damaging process. The other thing is the liver, a lot of the stuff that goes into the circulatory system, it, the, the, the lymphatic and the circulatory system, they kind of, they, they meet together and without their meeting point eventually those things that were in there will be the liver. So they get detoxified, excreted, and having a congested liver is going to make the whole process sort of really much worse. Um, and when uh, Brenda was on my show, we were talking a little bit about the liver flushes. And this is something hmm. that I cannot, um, I, I'm constantly telling people any opportunity I can have you heard of the liver flush? <laughs> Why don't you do a few liver flushes? You will, trust me, you will feel amazing. So the doing liver flushes can really help to decongest the liver. And that when you, it's like, I don't even know how to say uh, what example to give, but it's like when you have a really uh, blocked up, let's say Hoover, it's because the filter is really blocked up. If you take it out, th throw it, throw it out, put in a new filter. Now your Hoover is really sucking really well and it's cleaning really well. So when your liver is congested, with uh, there's a, a bunch of the code in, in the medical term is um intra intra hepatic stones so stones inside the liver they're basically uh coalesced bio and bio acids and bio salts and um sometimes parasites sometimes toxic metals uh, and other toxins so these kind of block up our bio ducts and basically bio can't flow as well and that's another reason why a lot of folks can't digest their food very well they might not get uh also, they might not get a lot of nutrition out of the food. So take two people, one with a congested liver, one without, give them the same food, the same nutrients. The one with the congested liver will not be able to extract the same amount of nutrition from that food. Again, this this is another cause for why people are overfed or, or well fed, but they look, they're showing all signs of, of malnourishment, deficiencies and disease right so <clears throat> i think that's a, a big missing piece so uh, now there's been a lot of a big trend for gut health in the last few years which is awesome but the liver and the and the gallbladder or the biliary system the he hepatobiliary system is a big part of that because that's where the bio comes uh you know we have um um a bunch of um obviously enzymes that come from the pancreas but these are all a part of the digestive system. So you, if you just focus on the gut health and you forget about your liver, I think you will not get as optimal results as if you focus on the whole body. And that includes, you know, doing kidney cleanses, do, uh, doing liver flushes, uh, doing enemas to decongest the other end. It's, mm -hmm. it's really, we have to take a holistic approach to health if we want to really achieve that optimal health from which the, the higher cognitive functions can, can flourish. Yeah, I want to just say to you, I've done several of those series, uh, s several series of those liver flushes, and they're, they're, they're so powerful. I mean, just the amount of stones that come out, you know, and yeah. even as like a healthy person, you know, and, and um, yeah, yeah. so it's really amazing. So, you know, even if you're healthy and you feel like, oh, we don't need it, everyone, I I think, you know, I mean, that's generally yeah. everyone could benefit from, from that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would say one of the surprising benefits, I did a series of liver gallbladder flushes is that for me as an energy healer, like, because I am, I'm, I receive energy as an open channel. And when uh, some of those to toxins I didn't even know were in there, I think there was some parasite issues for me as well. It just really makes a person feel more open as a mm. channel. So I'm going to say as, you know, energy healers, any of the like <laughs> spiritual realm healers, like there is a definite connection between when we detoxify and all different levels, um, that there's this lightness that enters mm. in. And we don't really even realize it necessarily until after the fact. So mm. I think that was kind of surprising for me. Like, yes, my, my gut felt better. My liver felt better. My digestive issues um, subsided. But for me, I just felt much more open to spirit, God, universe. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't even realized that that was something that was kind of stagnant 
And one other thing, um, I released a lot of anger and frustration I didn't even know mm. was there. I was going to mention something there. Yeah. And I I mean, I actually cried a little bit afterwards because I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so frustrated. And then my release is to cry. P mm -hmm. Other people have different releases. But I think that's really important. I know we're looking at like a lot of the physical benefits of detoxification. Yeah. But know that that from a holistic perspective, that can translate into so many different other other types of emotional releases, spiritual openings and awakenings that can occur. Yeah. And I know I'm not the only one that mm. has experienced this. So I wanted to add that in as yeah, like yeah, yeah. detoxification is so much more. Um, and then I would love, you started mentioning Sorry, about can, gut can, health. Can, can, Go I, ahead. can I just, just uh, yeah. you, you, um, you prompted me to remember a couple of things. <clears throat> so I did four liver flushes in four weeks around June to July this year, a couple of months ago. And um, definitely the day, some, some, if you're new to liver flushes, the day after you, you may feel a bit weak, especially if you're used to, used to eating more food. And then on the day of the flush and the day after you don't eat as much food. So some people feel a bit weak, but um, it goes away once your, your, your whole liver function improves. But now, when I do a liver flush, the next two, three days at least, sometimes more after that, I feel like I'm floating on a mm. cloud. And someone characterized it, um, another podcaster characterized it that after you do a liver flush, you feel like you're seven years old. Something, <laughs> something just like it's so rejuvenating. Like I'm like genuinely having like a almost like a, a feeling of like you're high. Like like on an entheogen, like San Pedro, you know, like some mm -hmm. a, uh, a empathetic sort of uh, heart energy kind of exuding. Now, what you were saying about anger and stuff, actually, this is I I, I don't know it was it in Chinese TCM in Chinese medicine. Yeah. I think the 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 gallbladder is where um, it, it has to do with with anger and mm, resentment the, and holding the liver, the liver, the liver too. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, you know how they they have this um kind of saying if someone has a very bilious personality they're kind of uh, angry so i also noticed that after a number of, of flushes i was less um uh getting less pissed off about just stupid little things like traffic and stuff like that so that that definitely helped it has to do it prob probably has to do with you know how we have all these meridians flowing so if you have a blockage uh, of the chi moving, getting the stones out. It's literally like any other blockage you might have anywhere in the body. And then there was one more thing you were you were mentioning, but then I forget now. Um, there were so many, so many things were popping into my head when you were talking <laughs> there. So anyway, let's move on. But I, I think um, definitely, if you're like the a healer or working with energy and stuff like that, it's one of those things where not enough. Not enough can be said. We can look at the the physical, like you said, Brenda. We can look at the the physical benefits, like uh, pooping better, digesting your food better. But there's a number of qualitative, nebulous things that I can I can attest to. Just really, re there's re real benefits. You can't verbalize or put your finger on, but it's it's in, it's in amazing how like you just feel more open, if you know what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. That was a surprising benefit for me. And so and we talked a lot about detoxification. I want to shift a little bit into like, okay, so we've, let's say we've done some detoxification protocols. Now we get into this, like, how do we really build and heal the microbiome and the gut so that we can sort of, I feel like kind of complete this healing journey because yes, detoxification is, is a key part. And I also think building um, a, a healthier gut and a healthier body, mind, spirit overall. So what would be some of the protocols for that after the detoxification process? Well, you could, you could incorporate them together, but what, one, one really good, um, and I think it's quite ancient, one good really, uh, one really good method of purification, detoxification, uh, in, and, and sort of improving gut function would be just your, your humble, simple old activated charcoal. So hmm. a couple of times a week, I believe most people would derive benefit from taking a few capsules of, of activated charcoal. What? And let me explain why, right? So when we, uh, many of us have these so-called gram-negative bacteria, which their cell wall 
there's a component or a fragment called lipopolysaccharide, also known as endotoxin. It's a recognized medical uh, thing. And when when they live and die, obviously, when they die, the, the cell breaks open and obviously the little toxins come out. But the fragments of cell wall are highly inflammatory to to our gut and they can get into our um, bloodstream, activate the nervous system. They can even open up the blood-brain barrier and cause mayhem in, in the body. Now, if you when you take uh, activated charcoal, you're binding up a lot of these guys. So that's that's a really good thing to do once in a while, once, twice a week. If, if you have gut stuff, probably more often would be even more helpful. Now, what feeds, what causes these bacteria to proliferate? It's actually the fiber that we eat. So this is why I, I don't like it when a practitioner is out there telling everybody to eat more fiber. Some people, you're actually going to make their problem worse if you if they eat a lot of fiber. So we have to really take a personalized approach. And if we can't, what you probably want to do is, um, what I, at least what I do, right, and I recommend to my clients is, Let's say you have a gut problem or you just want to, to do a cleanse. It, once or twice a year, it, ideally with the change of the seasons, let's say in, in spring and autumn, it's good to do like a, even a, a one week, but a two, two three week gut cleanse with some herbs. So <clears throat> Artemisia for parasites, cloves for parasites, um, grape, uh, grape seed extract is good for yeast and, and, and candida, uh, oregano oil. So just your, 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 there's a, a number of different herbs that we can use to, to, to just gently cleanse the, the system, right? Um, what that does is it knocks down these gram negative bacteria. And now you can probably eat more fiber without it causing a problem. You could probably eat a lot more foods without having reactivity. A lot, I believe a lot of people that can't tolerate foods, if you if you whack, whack those kind of more um, pathogenic, dysbiotic or opportunistic bacteria, there a lot of their stuff improves. A lot of in food intolerances improve. Like some people <clears throat> that can't drink milk, they do a, a gut cleanse and they can drink milk fine. It doesn't have to be A1 or A2 or goat milk. They drink any old milk if they want to and they're complete they don't have gas and, and stuff like that and bloating so I, th I think a lot of a lot of us are living with with um perturbed microbiotas because again the the toxins in the environment um our suboptimal nutritional status a lot of us just from a zinc deficiency because zinc is required for the hydrochloric acid to be produced in the stomach if you're deficient in zinc uh, you're not producing enough stomach acid, and that can cause a lot of these um, um, bad guys to either invade or if they're already there to overgrow. So doing this cleanse I'm talking about, and there's a great product. Uh, I don't have it here, but if uh, if anyone's interested, my favorite uh, full spectrum herbal cleansing product is called Biocidon, Biocidon.com, mm. and it's such a delicious. It's kind of like a tincture formula. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it works with kids. I, I might, I've been giving it to my daughter since six months of age. Um, uh, any, it works just for anything for parasites, uh, candida. And there's obviously, uh, if there's parasites and like real serious dysbiosis, we want a more, even more comprehensive, uh, approach, but that's just a, a really like every, like I said, every year, twice a year, myself, my wife, uh, will do like a, a cleanse with that and a couple of liver flushes each time. So that is a really good way to make sure no baddies, quote unquote, are overgrowing. The charcoal is an added sort of um, uh, insurance policy. And I think, to be honest, that is where a lot of people's problems are coming. A lot of people that can't tolerate uh, various foods, it's either you're either not producing enough hydrochloric acid and be, uh, uh, because zinc is also required for the di a lot of digestive enzymes that are created in the pancreas, that can also be another reason why how a zinc deficiency can cause dysbiosis eventually because if you're not if you're not breaking down the food fully uh back, certain bacteria can start to ferment or putrefy it and that can cause inflama inflammatory compounds to be secreted more damage to the gut more inflammation in the gut so uh chewing well brenda like you were saying when you were on my show talking about sitting down when you're eating de-stressing chewing well eating mindfully that's a big part of it as well actually you've made me think about that much more since since we Good. asked oh you you reminded me to remind myself to slap myself and like come on 
you should you should be doing this you know um <laughs> but yeah so just to kind of give the whole the whole uh, to summarize the whole chain chewing hydrochloric acid zinc dependent uh, nu again nutrition is important here but uh zinc dependent then that reduces small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and fungal overgrowth it creates for now decongesting the liver means more bile is flowing from the gallbladder and the liver so you we're uh, emulsifying and digesting the food better especially the fats we're extracting more fat soluble vitamins which are super important of course for all sorts of things and um by killing killing off potential dysbiotic pathogenic and um, opportunistic bacteria with the occasional cleanse with herbs again gentle it's been around in mother nature since the beginning of uh, of time uh, we are reducing the chances for uh, that these gram negative guys are going to overgrow and then they ferment a bunch of the the fiber that you eat and cause you more more damage and then as a as a once in a while sort of thing a bit of charcoal is just has many many different um, benefits, including these. And I'll tell you, <clears throat> a lot of the benefits from fasting is actually giving your gut a break from all these fibers that are feeding these bacteria. So a less stressful, less cortisol increasing way to get the benefits of fasting is to just take some activated charcoal. Pro tip. Mm, yes. Um, thank you so much for those tips. Those are really powerful. Um, and I know I, I've used a lot of those in my own life, um, you know, including biocide. And I th found that to be That's a awesome. very powerful um, healing because it's a it's a mixture of herbs, right? That they yeah, put like in 15 and, different ones. Yeah. And so it's, it's really powerful and, and a cleansing. Um, yeah. So so thank you for that. And I know, you know, and like Brenda, you know, you guys were talking about just creating that space right when we release the toxins we're you know and, and toxins can come in the form of you know the environmental toxins but also the emotional toxins and mm -hmm. you know that that really do take up that space and so when we take time and really release that we can make time so we can raise the consciousness on this planet and within ourselves first of course and so christian i'd love to hear about your your macro vision. Um, how do you see your work in the world as changing the future of this planet? What I'd really love to do is reach the the young folks out there, there out there that are going to be parents in the next few years or in, in their lifetime. I think if we can teach the parents, even if they have small kids, but especially if they're still in their late teens, early twenties, whatever else. If we can reach them now and teach them to start making these small changes again, these changes are not on a on a grand the grand scheme of things. Switching to to organic food, buying a reverse osmosis system, learning that you need to have a HEPA air filter, just these little tiny things, uh, reducing uses of plastics, personal care products. If you can in incorporate these into your daily life, cooking meals at home, then when you have a child and you have those habits, you are you're just going to operate from your default baseline level. If you have a, a small kid, like let's say some of my clients, their oh. kid may be two or four years old, and now they suspect uh, they had, uh, they're on the spectrum or they've already been diagnosed. It's very difficult to crowbar all the interventions that I talk about in my book when you have one or maybe even two small kids to deal with and a job and everything else. So the, the sooner we can teach people younger... Uh, anybody but especially the younger people that will have the next generation of kids the sooner we can teach them to, to take care of themselves get their whole um uh, sort of uh, health in order because a lot of these moms getting pregnant nowadays having kids they're very yeah they have very poor health status right a lot of them are even on antidepressants or they're on high uh they're hypothyroid or they have an autoimmune condition or gut dysfunction or some other immune system activation and that's that has a toll on the developing uh, baby at the end of the day on and on their immune system so they're they're born with these uh, so, some of these things can even be we can go as far as to call them their derangements right um, even so, so, some um, moms of autistic kids have been tested for antibodies to the fetus's brain so there, there's a lot of uh, these are again the, the root cause of these things is suboptimal health status which is 
a, a product of toxicity, suboptimal nutrition. Really, at the end of the day, it's those it's those couple of things, you know, and a lot of a lot of stress. So if this is my, I suppose I'm doing other things right now. I I want to increase my reach in terms of how many people I can reach. Let's say if I want to send an email or or social media message, I want to be able to reach a lot of people, and I want to be able to help influence them to influence others around them. And it's like if if you take one person like myself ten years ago. If I, if I took that 27, eight-year-old kid and I taught him all the things I know now, that's a man that is going to be an amazing uh, dad, a healthy uh, person, uh, contributing well to society they, that would teach their kids how to take care of themselves. They would take care of his wife or, or partner when she's pregnant. So the sooner we can make it, these things cool and reach these kids, I think the sooner we can... We, in one generation, we can make... Tremendous change. Now I'm not a I'm not a hopium dealer here. I know it it won't happen in one generation, but the impact we can have with the internet and these tools we have here is can be tremendous. So this this I think at the end of the day, when I die, I want to know that I I made a dent in this side of things. Mm, absolutely, I I I hear you on that one as well. So please tell our listeners where they can find you and anything you're currently working on. Thank you so much. Uh, my just my website is my name, ChristianJordanov.com. I offer free free um, intro calls if anyone has a complex complex chronic health problem that they need. I really enjoy working with people like that and kind of helping them, helping just educating them on how to self heal and really get back on their feet. Um, and I also offer free video courses and other other courses. I on my podcast or on the website and. Um, at the moment, I'm actually I have ideas for two books and three three courses. I'm not even sure what I'm working on, but <laughs> I'm at the computer every day. I'm not even sure I'm doing anything. My 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 goal is in the next month or two to to launch a, a sort of a DIY gut healing course for the, for the people that are not ready to invest in like a health consulting sort of thing over six or twelve months, so so they can at least have uh, a, sort of an algorithm on what to do to help themselves um, because I believe a lot of people can actually help themselves with very little, with very little input from a practitioner. It's literally because so many people have so much low hanging fruit, like the diet, the environment, the toxic exposures, the lack of supplementation, you know, the, the non-organic food. So if you can just uh, lay it out in a systematic, logical way for people, I, I believe a lot of people will help themselves without, again, requiring any any other outside assistance. So I, I think that will probably be the next project that people can will be able to see on the website in the next couple of months. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today, Christian. And... Stacey, thank you. And Brenda, thank you so much. This was an absolute pleasure. And I'm sure I'll be having you on my show in the future. Beautiful. And thank you for listening to Be The Love podcast. If you've enjoyed listening to our show, please share the love by sharing it with your friends and family, giving us a five-star written review on iTunes and Spotify, or liking us on Facebook. And please consider supporting our mission to awaken our souls with a monthly donation that helps us with the operating costs of this podcast so we can continue to spread the love. To contribute, visit our Patreon website at patreon.com forward slash be the love podcast. And stay tuned for more episodes being released on Mondays at 5.55 a.m. Mountain Time.